Well, welcome back, everyone, to the DOV Family Podcast. We've got a great guest today from outside the diocese, Liz Kelly. Liz, how are you today? Thanks for being with us. Great. Thank you for having me. So excited to talk to you, Liz. So a little bit about Liz for our listeners. You are a popular speaker, an award-winning author of nine books. I really want to hear how you were able to write nine <laughs> books, including... Reasons I Love Being Catholic, I like that title, which won the Catholic Press Association First Place Award for popular, Best Popular Presentation of the Faith in 07, mm -hmm. and Jesus Approaches, one we're excited about here in this diocese, What Contemporary Woman Can Learn About Healing, Freedom, and Joy from the Woman of the New Testament, which has won a number of awards, including Best Book in the Religion Christianity category for 2017 to 2019, and Liz will be coming to Victoria October 1st through 3rd to lead a retreat on Jesus Approaches. So you can visit her website at www.lizk.org and sign up for the retreat at victoriadiocese.org slash woman dash retreat. Spots are limited. So again, welcome Liz. Thanks for making time for us today. Very happy to be here. So uh, we're excited to have you come in person to Victoria in the fall for the retreat. So what should women expect to get out of that retreat? Mm -hmm. um, the book, Jesus Approaches, <clears throat> really grew out of my own experience of praying with the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius. It was part of um, my training in spiritual direction school that we went through the exercises ourselves. And, and as I was doing that, and you know that um, if you're praying with those exercises, it's a very intense and deliberate and methodical way of praying through uh, the life, the public ministry, his passion, his death and resurrection. And I was uh, continually surprised in my prayer how prevalent the women in those passages were to me. And I had this sense that they wanted to be better known, again, not for themselves, but because of the experience that they had had with Christ in that encounter, how healing that was and how transforming that was. So the book really grew out of that. And Magdalene was the first chapter that I wrote and she became kind of the anchoress of the book. And I was really asking her to populate my imagination with other women that needed to be included. And um, so that's kind of how the book developed. Once it was released, um, my archdiocese asked me to create a study sort of slash retreat around it uh, for the women of our archdiocese. I think maybe a thousand or so women in our area have gone through it. We've now posted it online. And so the retreat really draws um, from the book and from that study, just inviting women to enter into those passages in the gospel where women were such an important part of Christ's life and even his formation as, as a man um, and, uh, and praying through that. Wow. So, you know, our bishop actually at the beginning of this year, did a month-long Ignatian retreat. Oh. So he, he said it was super powerful. So yeah. not yeah. surprised to hear the Ignatian exercises uh, helped you helped you write this. How long was your retreat that you went on? Or were you just going through the right. exercises? Right. So you have the option to go off and do a 30-day like your bishop did. That's for like uh, the super spiritual, for mere mortals <laughs> like me. Yes. Yes. Um, I did what's called the 19th annotation. And in that, Ignatius says you can do this every day for about a period of nine months. So instead of praying four or five hours a day like your bishop did, I was praying about an hour and a half, but just going through it um, over. And, and actually, I was glad that I did it that way because I felt like it stretched the graces more into my daily life than if I had gone away. Um, I, I would like to do a 30 day, but I'm a little intimidated by, <laughs> by that at this stage, but good for him. He's, yeah, he, he's he got said a that, powerhouse. <laughs> he, he is, but you know, it's funny if you hear him talk about it, it's in one of our um, previous podcast episodes for any well, listeners that want to hear. He talked about our men's conference and our women's conference, but he said for years, he said, I want to do it. And then he had the option and he started to make some excuses, but then finally a friend removed all the barriers so he said, okay, <laughs> if I don't do it, it's my fault. So he yeah. did it and we're, we're reaping the benefits in our, in our oh, diocese for yeah, it. You, you will for a long time to come. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So I think, well, your story is a testament to the power of prayer. If we spend time in prayer, good things happen. Just mm -hmm. curious, in addition to the book, any, any other big revelations out of that time of prayer or going through that for nine months? Oh my goodness, so many I couldn't 
possibly <laughs> list them all. Um, it's a, a remarkable tool for learning um, not only the heart of God, but your own heart and relationship to him and what needs healing, what needs tweaking, what needs fanning mm -hmm. the flame, what needs to be pruned, what needs to be fertilized, you know, it's mm -hmm. so, it's a very, very intensive uh, practice. And it's something I've done a couple of times now. Um, um, and, and we'll hopefully be able to do it uh, again, but, and it's, um, and it also enlivens the word. I would say that one of the greatest things that happens in that kind of prayer is that the gospel story becomes your own. You mm -hmm. see that it belongs to you. You belong to it. You have a part in it. You have a role in it. Um, so I think taking that kind of ownership um, was very important, even with all the demands that that ownership then places on you. <laughs> oh, yeah. But it's very important, and I think as Catholics, sometimes we struggle to own God's mm -hmm. word uh, the way that we are invited to. Yeah, you spend time with Jesus, he's going to call you to do something, you know, and um, right. uh, another benefit of prayer is it, it causes you to look back on your life and see <laughs> see how you were living stories of scripture. at the. You didn't realize it at the time. You say, oh, there he was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think I got my answer to the question, how did you write all these books? You must pray a lot. So um, <laughs> It is one of my favorite activities, yes. That is great. So, so you've written nine books, mm -hmm. and your most recent one, Love Like a Saint. I love that. So um, could you tell us a little bit more about Love Like a Saint? It was such a gift because it, when COVID hit, as it did for so many people in the kind of work that I do, like my calendar just dried up empty, mm -hmm. you know, just emptied for about a year within about three days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and of course, it, no matter what's going on in the world, pandemic or economic collapse or whatever, your mission never changes. And so um, I still had to pursue my mission uh, that God had given me. And so that was, it opened up this space for me to write this book, which I'd been wanting to write for several years anyway. Um, there was a wonderful book on the virtues that we used in spiritual direction school that had been written by this very holy Jesuit. His name's Father John Wickham. And they used that text in, in um, the program that I went through. And he's since deceased, but uh, I really believe his materials are anointed. And he would write a little introduction to the virtue and then offer um, prayer prompts for praying for that virtue, to grow in that virtue. And the first time I opened it up, I thought, I want to write this book, but I want to include stories of the lives of holy and virtuous people that can sort of put a little bit more meat on the skeleton of how, what this would look like. So that's what I did during the year of COVID. <laughs> I got to know some really cool holy women. Oh, that is that is a great way to spend the year of COVID. So the title makes me think about how loving like a saint, mm. the saints each loved in a way so different. They're like a prism yeah. of God's love, right? So, yeah. mm -hmm. so did you find out a lot about the differences, but also maybe some commonalities among the saints as sure. you were writing that? Sure. I mean, and I think especially with, with someone who's already in the process of canonization because I chose lay women all the way up to sainthood. So there's a venerable, a servant of God, a, oh, awesome. you know, and so on and so forth. So we could kind of see the arc of our own lives in that, hopefully. And I concentrated just on one or two virtues per woman, rather than trying to capture every virtue that they exemplified. Because for example, they were all humble. <laughs> I didn't oh, have yeah. to, you know, write about right. that. That's a given. You have yeah, to be, humble. Right. Yeah, that's a commonality. Yeah. Right, right. Um, but also, it was, it was um, I, I think it was just a great prompt from the Holy Spirit, because by concentrating on just one or two virtues for each woman, I really got to know them in a much deeper way, a much more intimate way than if I had tried to capture every virtue. But tra by tracking friendship, Christian friendship through a life, or perseverance, or courage, um, it really helped to enliven those virtues, and it helped me to get to know them um, in a really personal way. I just feel like I have all these new friends. And I chose women that I specifically either knew a little bit about or knew nothing about so that I could, um, I could learn about them sort of selfishly. But they're a delight. The women in those pages are really just remarkable. 
Yeah, one thing we've been talking a lot in our diocese about for men and women is the importance of, and our bishops big on this as well, spiritual friendships. Oh. Did you notice that as a commonality? I've heard the saying, Curtis yeah. Martin says it, saints come in clusters. Did you find that in your mm -hmm. research? Yeah, I think that that's a really great phrase. And and the chapter uh, where I'm talking about Christian friendship, and I feel like I made all these new <laughs> friends too through the process of getting to know them, but is about uh, the life of Blessed Benedetta Bianchi Porro. She was an Italian uh, woman. She died in 1964. And her friends are as much a part of her holiness and her growth in virtue as her friendship to them was, mm -hmm. that, that it went back and forth and back and forth. And she very fortunately wrote many letters. So we have access to a lot of the material, the, a lot of the ways that she was thinking about her friends and, and how the ways they were thinking about her. Mm -hmm. And so it's just fantastic glimpse into the import of having friends who are wildly chasing and seeking the face of God mm -hmm. that are in your life. Um, yeah, can't do it alone. And you know, um, mm -hmm. well, the Trinity didn't do it alone, so to speak, right? I mean, our God is communal, so. Um, right, right. So, I, so listeners, I encourage you, if you're thinking about the retreat, bring a friend. We've got a different rate if you're gonna room with someone. And then also, if you wanna room with more than two, if you're comfortable with that, we can yeah. cut you a deal, but I know some people, I know I have a friend who's thinking of coming with, with some women she did axe retreats with, maybe three or four of them in a room together. So that'd probably be a powerful experience, right? Doing that retreat with some close friends. Sure, sure. Um, I, I highly recommend that. And curiously, I mean, there will be parts where we're silent and we're not necessarily speaking to one another. So I, I want to emphasize that, that you will have time to be quiet and silent alone with the Lord, even if you have roommates. Um, but That's right, your best friend, your best yeah, friend, Jesus. Well, and, but there's a real bond that happens between um, when people are praying together, whether or not it's we're vocalizing that together or not, but just when people gather all seeking the face of God, um, you know, he anoints that um, mm -hmm. and, 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 and you can, you can feel that, you sense that. Absolutely, he promises it. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I with them. So, mm -hmm. so well, that is that is great. So you you know you're a writer, you're a speaker, retreat master. What led you into this whole world? How did this how did this happen? How'd you get going in it? You know, I went on my first retreat. I was just thinking about this. I think I was in maybe sixth grade, and um, the nuns took us to. Uh, a little town in southern Minnesota called Sleepy Eye, and there were a group of sisters who lived there, and we, you know, spent the day on retreat. And uh, I was so attracted to that notion and thought there was something so right about the universe <laughs> that we would go away and spend a day in prayer and then come back. There was something about it that just sort of was like holy lightning. It struck me. And um, I started getting involved in retreats, you know, even in high school, giving retreats to the younger underclassmen and things like that. And so it's always been something I've been very attracted to. And um, it's just part of the work I've been given is, I think, to invite people into that anointed place where God can speak to you and heal you um, and, and to help create a place where people can uh, escape to him. Wow, and how long have you been kind of in this uh, type of ministry? Well, oh, forever, I guess. Yeah, it's um, been yeah, I think, I mean, the last 20 years or so, um, oh I've been doing concentrating more on uh, speaking and retreats and, and writing. There's still more to do. <laughs> yes, so in all those years, are there some common themes that you see, the needs that people or women especially have time and time again? Yeah. Yeah, there definitely are. And thankfully, there's a lot within God's word that addresses uh, all of that. But I think there's a kind of perfectionism. Yes, I was going to guess that because so my <laughs> wife, she's always, you know, wanting to be the perfect mom, the perfect wife. And I feel like a lot of Christians in general do it. But it seems like especially women have such high, the men maybe don't always have that bar. You know, the woman, it's always like, 
going for the top. So, yeah. so is that? Yeah. I was going to say maybe that's a commonality. Well, I do think that there's a lot of pressure on what womanhood should look like, you mm -hmm. know. Um, mm -hmm. And and I think sometimes even Catholic women who are trying to push back against um, right messages that have been obscured, you know, that we need to be aggressive or like men or, you know, take charge or you know, whatever it is, whatever typical sort of stereotypical message it might be, that there's almost a reverse pressure <laughs> than to go another way. And, um, and so finding one's identity in Christ, I mean, that's the wound, that's mm -hmm. the human wound. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, but I do think that the way that that's embodied in women is often tied up with a certain kind of pressure, perfectionism, um, self-doubt, um, doubting one's worth, and that kind of thing. Yeah. Makes me think of that John Paul II quote: "You are not the sum of your fears and failures; you are the sum of the Father's love for you." I think he said that at World Youth Day here. But yeah, if we could all just understand that and live out of that, yeah. man. Yeah. Well, and Pope Benedict had a similar phrase of just like, you are the result of a thought of God. Wow. You know? Yeah, I love that. You're, you're not an accident. You're not an evolutionary accident. You are the result of a thought of God. And mm -hmm. um, boy, that if you can let that soak in, that's uh, that's some powerful, powerful um, prayer with that. With that. Idea. Yeah. God wanted you here. Mm -hmm. What a. What a message, yeah. And and he wants you on retreat. Yeah, he may want you October 1st through 3rd at the Spiritual Renewal Center. Um, <laughs> what would you tell someone that's maybe sitting here listening like, I don't know. I mean, well, first of all, if someone's thinking, I don't know, and it's financial, don't let that stop you from contacting the office. We can work something out. We have scholarships available. We'll figure something out with you. So if it's money, I'm taking that one out right away. Okay. But what if someone's listening, Liz, and they're like, I just don't know if I can make a whole weekend for that. I wish it was just a few hours. I don't know. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Mm -hmm. Well, resistance is often uh, a sign of the enemy being at work, <laughs> you know, when we're trying to um, embrace a deeper prayer life or a deeper relationship with Christ. There's always resistance there, and that's okay. You can come anyway and still feel some of that resistance. Um, uh, but, you know, and also I would just pray for the peace that surpasses all understanding to know whether or not this is your time, you know, and that this is the vehicle for you. And then to lean into what the response to that is. Lean into the response to that. Don't resist the response like, oh, I'm just imagining this or it's just in, in my head or something like that. No, that's the Holy Spirit working. You can trust him. Well, Liz, I'm sure you'll have lots of nuggets of wisdom for the attendees. I just got to say, I, I know you must be a writer because I've written down some of the cool one-liners or words <laughs> you use that I don't use. Anchorous. That's a cool word. I need to start mm -hmm. using that. Holy mm -hmm. lightning. I like mm -hmm. that one too. And yeah. you said import instead of importance. So, you know, <laughs> I'm sure you'll have lots of uh, nuggets at the retreat. Maybe a maybe a freebie for folks right now if they if they can't make it or they're still deciding what's what's one piece of advice you'd give anyone mm -hmm. about how to improve their relationship with mm -hmm. God today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to spend time in his word. It is living, it is active. It is speaking to you personally as it's speaking universally to the church. And if you don't believe me, you have to try it, you know, and give it a chance. Uh, even if it's just five, ten minutes every day with even the daily reading just to get started. But there's so much um there's so much good stuff out there to help you get started praying with scripture, including Jesus approaches and love like a saint and your heart is home. <laughs> this is part because of Because you're pointing people to scripture. I mean, every time. Yeah. It's, every, it's... every chapter ends with prompts for prayer, scripture yeah. verses. It's like, that's where you need to go. If I, And if my book can help get you there, that's the important thing. That's awesome. Get you from your book to the, to the good book, the ultimate book. Well, I was just at a men's uh, weekend conference and Father Larry Richards was there. And I don't know if you know who he's saying. He goes, no Bible, no breakfast, no Bible, no bed. So he's <laughs> always kind of yelling at men, you need to read your Bible, but he's doing it as a loving father. He's not doing it because he knows it's it's what's good for us. And God's word will I change heard, our lives if we spend time in it. 
and I heard the greatest expression uh, earlier this week, a woman who works in ministry, she said, you know, if you're not reading and praying with your Bible, your prayer is a monologue. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. a monologue. And it's like, if you want to work out that dialogue muscle, that's part of what you do. And it can be hard. It can be uncomfortable. It can be, um, uh, you don't have to do it perfectly. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's like any other spiritual skill. We grow in it and mm -hmm. we can grow in confidence and knowing when we're hearing the voice of God and when we're hearing something else. Absolutely. I, I've seen that in my own life because I, when I had, uh, had my reversion first to Christ, then I found why I'm Catholic. But mm -hmm. I, I had a Protestant friend meeting with me once a week in college, showing me how to read the Bible and pray. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I went from knowing nothing to... Now you can almost, you know, just a little bit at a time, you get more and more familiar with it. It's like building a muscle. So, sure. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well, Liz, I thank you so much for your time with us today. And especially thank you for coming to Victoria, Texas, October 1st through 3rd. So folks really encourage you to sign up for the retreat. Consider giving it as a gift to somebody. You go to victoriadiocese.org slash woman dash retreats. Okay, we'll have the link in the show notes. And also check out Liz's website for all of her books. I'm sure you'll be bringing some that weekend too, right? If folks want to pick sure. them up there. But LizK.org. And uh, we hope to see many of you October 1st through 3rd. We're excited for those that have already signed up. It's going to be a great weekend. So thank you again, Liz. Mm -hmm. God bless Texas. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Would you mind closing us in prayer? Not at all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We call to mind the presence of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and that it is always the desire of the Father to bless us and to draw us into his company. Father, we thank you in advance for the graces that you are going to pour out upon this retreat, and we pray even now for every woman who will attend uh, that you are preparing graces for her even now to shower over her, that you would make her path an easy one, free of obstacles to find her way closer to your most sacred heart in this blessed retreat. And we thank you for the opportunity to offer it. And I pray that you would bless all those who have made donations in order that uh, those without may attend as well. And we give you all glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen.